Yo, yo, this is your girl, Jula. You're listening to the Pastry Bear Podcast with Winston Murdoch. Hola, hola, esta es Jula. Estás escuchando el Pastry Bear Podcast con Winston Murdoch. Pastry Bear. Pastry, pastry Bear. What's good, y'all? And welcome back to another episode of our podcast. I really hope that you enjoyed our previous episode where we discussed the future novel cuisine. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the career that has seen a drastic increase in the past two plus years. That career is private chef or personal chef. I myself have some experience in this area. Private chefs are dime a dozen and some are making a great living doing it. But what does it take to become a private chef? What's the difference between a private chef and a personal chef? Where did this concept of private chef come from? What the future of the industry looks like? And what are some of the important factors to consider when venturing into the private chef world? You will also learn about my journey in the private slash personal chef space. What up y'all? And welcome to another episode of the Pastry Bear Podcast. I'm your host, Winston Murdoch. Pastry Bear. Pastry Bear. Welcome to the podcast Pastry Bear avec Winston Murdoch. Murdoch. Pastry Bear Podcast beating them real good. As a chef, your role is to prepare meals to satisfy the palate of your customers. Whether they're in a restaurant, a hotel, or in someone's home, the chef occupation is now considered professional, but at one point in life, it was only seen as domestic work. But due to the creativity and skills of many of the chefs before us, the title was changed. Some people see the word chef as a person whose only responsibility is the preparation of meals, but is way more technical than that. A chef, to me, is a mystical being that is able to transform ingredients into delicious dishes. They turn water into a flavorful broth or soup and turn pure chocolate into decadent pudding or mousses. They also are able to create laughter and happiness by the way of the dinner table. The chef occupies a role in society from as far back as the 15th century BC. But in the Middle Ages, there was the creation of a community. The kitchen was broken down into sections. Sections like the patissier, which was originally responsible for the preparation of poultry and tarts and pies, or the rotisserie, who was responsible for cuts of meats. But being a chef in today's world is totally different. When I came out of culinary schools, for example, wearing a chef jacket, the chef checkered pants, and the high hat was an honor. It gave us the feeling of position and stature. But as time goes by, with the influence of the Western culture, the chef attire has slowly been abolished. Now we're seeing chefs cooking t-shirts and suits, even designer clothes, which in some case piques my interest. But just how the attire is changing, the role of the chef is changing too. Most chefs are now striving to be entertainers and personalities or what they call public figures or celebrity chefs, which is centered around popularity and making money. Being a celebrity chef, I believe, only focuses on the interactive aspect of cooking, that which then will affect the quality of the food. One area you see a great increase in this is the private chef or the personal chefs. Some would say a private chef or a personal chef is a professionally trained person who is hired by different clients to prepare meals in the client's home based on their needs. 
Sometimes the chef live on property, which could be considered as a private chef, or comes in on request, which would be considered a personal chef. This person typically is able to make food from a variety of cuisine and is versed in both savory and sweet dishes. Dishes, dishes, dishes. Having a personal chef or a private chef was a privilege that only the rich and famous could afford, which they used for not only themselves but to entertain their guests and to lock in deals and contracts from business meetings. While food itself main function is to nourish the body, the dining experience provide an atmosphere of intimacy. Hence the reason why most business deals are done over a meal, in a nice restaurant or in someone's home, or even when you're trying to get to know a potential candidate to be in a relationship with. You take them out on a date to a restaurant. The career of being a private chef have seen some changes over the past years. And it will continue to see changes in the coming future. But who will survive in this area will be determined by the ability to adapt and to foresee the future. I want to break down what I think a private chef world would look like and to help you to prepare yourself for what's coming. Like I said in the previous episode titled The Future Novel Cuisine, that there's only one way to see the future. And if you want to know that, you got to check out that episode. But like I discussed earlier, like that in the past, having a private chef was something only the rich and famous could afford. And presently, we're seeing that this type of service is widely available to pretty much everyone. This only means that in the future, we will see a gradual increase in the use of this service. This change that we're seeing in the private chef slash personal chef space is directly associated with the pandemic and the internet. internet, internet, internet. Whoa, we're cooking up a storm today. <laughs> Pastry Bear podcast beating them real good. Pastry Bear. Pastry Bear. Yo, why you all want to cut in a murder? Watching a murder. Watching a murder. Pastry Bear. Pastry Bear. Pastry Bear. I want to start with the pandemic. How? Has the pandemic affect the increase that we're seeing in the private chef space? Human beings strive on personal interaction. We need people around us to have a sense of purpose and belonging. And the dining experience provides the level of intimacy that is essential for human connectivity. So when the world was on lockdown, the need for that intimacy increased based on the position that the world was in with people dying daily there was an increase in emotion which required people wanting to spend more time with family and friends in order to create memories and there is no other way to do that without food and the dining experience in america everything is moving at a fast pace most professionals don't really have time for themselves they don't even have time to prepare themselves a home-cooked meal. So when the pandemic happened, and people who don't normally cook for themselves, who normally go out to restaurants, but want a delicious home-cooked meal, turned to the private chef. This opportunity of the pandemic and people being locked inside of the house created a space for the private chef. And on the other side, there was a lot of people who got laid off because of the pandemic. Some who had some interest in cooking and menu development and understand the operation of a kitchen 
and some who just, you know what, just had this interest, just wanted something to do. They decided that they was going to go and create a company or a business, being a personal chef, cooking for others as a way of bringing in some income. Income, income. Yo, are you around the court in America? The Lord has... What could they put as distributor avec on stand murder? Watching a murder. Watching a murder. Another influence that assist in the increase of the amount of private chef is the internet and technology. This, in some areas, has to do with the future of private chefs. But let's start with the present. The internet has provided the biggest asset for the world of business for entrepreneur. As you are now able to market yourself to the world without a big promotional team or even a big budget, all you need is your skills and your cell phone. Because humans are easily influenced and also because of their desire and greed, they tend to want everything that they see, which is something that is programmed in us at an early age via the television. There is also the fact of the need to constantly impress the world that we're doing better, living and looking better than we actually are. Some call it fake it until you make it. The rich and famous lifestyle is in great demand and everyone wants to display a wealthy persona. This itself has led to the increase in the use of private chefs. What do I mean? How does this work? Well, a group of girls go to Barbados on vacation. They're gonna try to create some content for the TikTok and the Instagram. So they will hire a private chef to come to their Airbnb because a private chef shows wealth and stability and it's a great flex on people, on people, on people, on people. Whoa, we're cooking up a storm today. <laughs> Pastry bear. Bear. bear, Pastry 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 Bear, I see the future of the world in a different light. The blockchain technology, the unique and creative apps and gadgets that we're seeing being developed presently will only mean that in the future, we will be able to communicate or interact on a one-on-one -on -one basis via the internet. I am uncertain if they will be able to recreate the intimacy that is created via the dining experience. These apps that are created are changing the world and changing the way people think, changing the way we do business, changing the way we operate. The internet and technology will affect the food industry as the creation of robots will replace the chefs in the kitchen. Check the internet for all the robotic companies that's presently being created to replace the humans. So what will all these dedicated and passionate chefs do? I know, create a personal chef business. Chef business. Chef business. Chef business. Chef business. Watching a murder. Watching a murder. Another area that has created the opportunity for private slash personal chef is the introduction of Airbnb. The rise of the Airbnb app via the internet has made the perfect space for the chefs to put together a personalized service for various guests. This is due in part to the fact that now 
other than before, when people travel to, let's say, Antigua, the most popular option before was to stay in a hotel. This is what most people could afford. Only the rich and the wealthy was afforded with the opportunity to stay in private condos and villas. But now, Airbnb has created a leverage. Most guests that used to stay in the hotels were confined to eating food from the hotel restaurants as there is no space for you to prepare your own meals. And it also affected the privacy as if you wanted to be alone, the only option you had was to hire room service. But now with the development of Airbnb, it made the lifestyle of villa living and personalized service more accessible to everyone. It's a win-win for everyone playing this game. But it opened up a door for other service industries, especially chefs. So because they, they rent a home and not a room, it gives us access to a kitchen and a dining room, which creates the opportunity for a local chef to put together a needed service, which is Cheese. private dining. 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 I myself, I've had my taste of the private chef industry and I can tell you it's way more profitable than you think. If you are able to start a professional private chef company in the right location then you will definitely see some great financial rewards. Areas like Miami where I live are more important the Caribbean. My experience in this industry started back in Portland in Jamaica. I got a job as a pastry chef at a hotel in Port Antonio. The hotel wasn't completed when I signed on to the team. So I was assigned to the home of one of the partners of the development who also owned his own villa in the area. For obvious reasons, we are going to refer to him as Harry. At this point in my career, I had no experience in this area. Majority of my life, I had been doing only pastry, but I did acquire some skills from my culinary school in regards to table setting and service and cooking came natural to me. Working for Harry, the music mogul and business executive helped me to understand the importance of intimacy that I keep speaking about in regards to the dining experience. I watched him entertain various guests and business associates who came in his home. He pampered them with, with a wonderful experience via the food from yours truly. And because he knew my skills in dessert, he would brag about his chef creativity when it comes to the sweets, building the anticipation for the final course. And when my dish was presented, it was always a hit. Harry enjoyed having people over to showcase the skills of his private chef. A concept that has been around for ages. If you can go back, you will see the kings and queens of the time hosting dinner parties. To this day, we still see heads of government and business executives host dinner parties to do business. Which main purpose is to impress their guests. And that task of creating a wonderful experience is left on the back of the personal chef or the private chef. Chef, chef, chef. Pastry bear. Pastry, pastry bear. Pastry bear podcast beating them real good. My job as Harry's private chef was not only limited to cooking. I had to set the table, serve the food, take allergy and special requests, which led to me having a one-on-one -on -one interaction with each guest. I am not gonna lie, I didn't always like doing it, but often wondered what if the average person was able to afford this type of lifestyle. A few years later, after I moved to America from Jamaica, that feeling came back to me. The desire 
to provide the service to the average person so they could experience having a personal chef or a private chef come to their home and prepare a meal. That desire transformed into a business. It took some time to get it right. I went through a few name changes for the company, but one sticked. I won't mention the name of this company as I am no longer a part of it, but I can give you a few hints. It's a private chef company with emphasis on the one word you have heard me repeated numerous times in this episode, experience, and it was located in Miami. It took me and my business partner six months to bring it from nothing to something, cooking for some of Miami and the United States superstar, something I was already knowledgeable about working with Harry as some of his guests and clients were international superstars. So I knew what they like and how they liked it. But when we were on the brink to transform the brand into the desired private chef company for the South, me and my business partner split. I spoke about that in the first episode titled Finding Purpose. So if you who is listening to me right now have a passion for cooking and you have a desire to serve people, then being a private chef is the ultimate job. When creating any business that will last, it has to be created around one reason and that reason is to serve. serve, serve, serve. What could the podcast distribute avec Winston Murdoch? Murdoch. Whoa, we're cooking up a storm today. <laughs> Watch an Amaradoc. Watch an Amaradoc. Let's say you wanted to start a successful private chef company. You have to find the right location. And I want to give you a few that I think are perfect for the upcoming private chefs. You have to choose a place that are already seen as destination. We already know the popular places in the United States. Places such as Miami and Orlando, Atlanta, DC, New York, LA, Las Vegas, and many more. There's many other destinations around the world, like Africa, but I want to highlight the beautiful destination in the Greater Antilles that are surrounded by the Caribbean Sea. Places like Jamaica, Bahamas, Barbados, Antigua and Bermuda, St. Vincent, Aruba, Trinidad and Tobago, Anguilla, Dominican Republic, Haiti. These are some of the places that you can create a professional private chef and you will definitely, definitely make some money. So now that we have went through the places that are ideal for this type of business, now let's discuss how to execute. Create a direction and theme around your brand. For example, if you're in Jamaica, don't try to market American food or promote that side of cooking. Show yourself preparing the most popular local food, for example, jerk chicken, which is known worldwide. Create a video of you cooking a unique version of the jerk chicken and you serving it to some people around a table in a home. Even if you have to stage it, fake it until you make it. The thing is, most people are not traveling to Jamaica to only eat what they eat every day back home. But if you are able to transform your dishes in a way that is palatable to the people that you are marketing to, then you will win. The next thing I want you to be aware of, you have to be open-minded. While embracing your culture is a great thing, be sure to not force it on your guests. You also have to be active on social media utilizing video content to relay what service you are offering. 
Another important thing is communicating efficiently and effectively. Once you get a message, try to answer ASAP as the person may be communicating with others. Also, have a menu and price list on hand so the client don't have to wait 24 hours to get a quote. Be clear, listen, ask questions to confirm the information that you receive. Once a person book, follow up with them. Provide them with as much information about the country and the area that they're traveling to. This will help them to feel more comfortable and confident in you. The utilization of hashtags. I can't reinforce this enough. Some people are putting hashtags that makes no sense or correlate with what they're doing. Stop putting food porn and, and hashtags that are not affiliated to your brand or what you represent. Let's say for example, you're a private chef in Haiti. Use hashtags like Asian private chef, our best chef in Haiti. This is how people will find you. Provide a warm and welcoming attitude. Remember, these people don't know you and they're coming from a different country with different beliefs and different morals. So you have to try to make them feel comfortable. Learn something about the culture of the people who you're going to serve. So there's something you can talk about with them when you're cooking. If you haven't got any business as yet, offer a few free personal chef gigs to the celebrities or public figures in whatever country you rep you're from. This will give you a platform of trust because if you can cook for these people who are public figures or celebrities in your country, then you can cook for anyone and people trust that. I believe the Caribbean has an advantage over the rest of the world because it's seen as a relaxed destination. The sun, the sea, the sun. But it also has the culture and the food, which is the fundamental ingredient in creating intimacy that can be produced in many other ways. But the most effective way to do so is the dining experience. experience. Watch on the uppity with no pity. The road curve of versatile this represent. Watch on the murder. Watch on the murder. Watch on the murder. Pastry Bear, Pastry Bear, Pastry Bear, Pastry Bear podcast beating them real good. It don't matter if the restaurant world become infested with robot workers, they will never be able to provide the guests with that intimacy that is given by that one-on-one -on -one personal experience. At least maybe not now. Chefs shouldn't be afraid to embrace the modern technologies that are available to us. Why not create a futuristic dining experience in someone's home that utilizes the old and the new? Please chefs, don't be afraid of the future of the internet. Apps like Metaverse will provide an opportunity for a young talented chef to create business that is able to be accessed from anywhere around the world. We are in an information time and content is everything. Just imagine a chef from Barbados can create an online restaurant showcasing the food of his culture and someone in Singapore can log on onto the metaverse and have a somewhat one-on-one -on -one live interaction of the food and the culture via the internet. There is no denying the private chef slash personal chef is the fastest rising career. So you can decide what side of this future you want to, to, be, be, on, on, to be on, to be on, to be on, to be on. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Pastry Bear Podcast. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. And leave a comment. Comment. What put the podcast pastry beer? Pastry beer podcast beating them real good. Whoa, we're cooking up a storm today. <laughs> Yo, why you around the cut in America? The Lada.
Ou ap kote podcast distributor avec Winston Murdoch. Watch on a up it with no pity at the road curve of versatile this represent. Watch on a murder. Watch on a murder. Page to bear.